Welcome to this week's episode of the Hawks Nest. My name is Leon Miller and I'm here with Clay. And we're gonna talk about national sports events. This month is March, you know, we have college basketball rolling in hot and heavy. March Madness is coming up, Clay. You know, it's time to start making picks for the bracket. Um, who do you have this year? Who are you gonna take for the March Madness? It's tough right now to not like Illinois, I yeah. think. They just put a beat down on Michigan, beat them by 23 without Io DeSumo. Wow. It's, it's hard to not like Illinois. It's hard to not like Gonzaga. Mm -hmm. You got Baylor. West Virginia is playing really good basketball right now, too. I mean, yeah. their defense. Obviously, Bob Huggins is known for, for his defense. Press Virginia. But mm, press there's Virginia. a lot of teams you got to like, I think. I think Illinois is up there, obviously. Michigan's still a good team. Ohio State's kind of one of those teams. Sleeper. Who do you got? Well, historically for NCAA March Madness, I've been Duke. Just, just historically, just off of just, you know, it's Duke. You know, I always go Duke, but Duke is not performing well at all this year. Uh, if you've been watching um, college basketball, I don't know if I want to go with the, you know, the standard Duke, Kentucky, just regular, just picking. Um, I probably have to go Ohio State myself, kind of, because I've been watching them, and they've really developed to a good shooting team, you know, as well as a defensive team, so. I'm liking Ohio State. I'm like Illinois, as you said as well, you know, and they're beating teams without their best player right now. Well, I want their best player. Yeah. So, like, it's like, it, it's hard to ignore. And it's weird, too. You mentioned Duke and Kentucky. I mean, I don't, I can't remember the last time we've seen a March where Duke and Kentucky aren't your front runner favorites yeah. to win at all. Like, I mean, it is, it is a weird time. I mean, Gonzaga's usually, they're up there and they're yeah. there now, but Baylor's up there right now. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned West Virginia, Illinois, Ohio State. Michigan and Michigan's one of those teams that they've had a run I guess like what five or six years ago yeah, they, yeah. and you just kind of see them kind of fall off the wayside Illinois is a team that hasn't been able to really mm -hmm. in a couple years get back but the fact that Duke and Kentucky are it's near amazing. the bottom of the barrel and not I mean just hanging around I mean obviously when you're coached by John Calipari or Mike Krzyzewski you're good enough once March rolls around to probably make some noise if you can just find the right combinations find the yeah. right guys but the way it's looked so far, Kentucky especially, man, it, it's been tough. This season, it won't happen for either team, but maybe next year they get a better recruiting class. And, and you see a lot of players going skipping college now, so that's where they lose a lot of recruits skipping college go to the G League. So, but that's a whole other conversation, you know. That's, One more team I think you need to look out for, a team that made a run a couple years ago, Loyola. They're yeah, number 20 Loyola right Chicago. now. Yeah, Loyola, Chicago. Yeah, Loyola, Chicago. They're number 20 right now uh, in the country. Uh, out of the Missouri Valley, and I think that's a team that they still have quite a few guys from that team that made that run. I think yeah. some, some fourth- and fifth-year seniors now, I wouldn't be surprised if they make a, a somewhat deep run. I know they went to the Final Four. I don't know how capable of that they are, mm -hmm. but they're a good team, too. They've, they're playing some good teams. They're actually playing SIU today uh, mm -hmm. in the, the Missouri Valley Tournament. I think Loyola is a team to look out for. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they can win at all, but it's March, man. You said it. Anything can happen, right? Anything can happen in March. When you know, just, you know, I don't know. I feel like it's up for anybody to grab. It's also important to know that the teams that you think are going to win, there's probably a good chance they, they get upset win, in the first yeah. or second round. I mean, I don't think you see your near one seeds. That's that's only happened once. But look out for maybe that third, fourth round upset of Illinois or Gonzaga or something like that. But, I mean, anything yeah. can happen. Yeah, okay. All right, Clay. And now let's transition into the NFL. We have the Pittsburgh Steelers. They just re-signed their uh, – Quarterback Big Ben to a new reconstruction uh, contract this year. Uh, it's a one-year deal, and I think he took a, a salary, you know, a cut to bring back more players on the team. It's spread throughout 2022, but it's only signed for one year. So he'll play this year with the option to do whatever he wants afterwards. Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think it was it was up in the air what Big Ben was going to do with Pittsburgh. I yeah. think I think it was kind of interesting to see. Uh, what they would do and Big Ben has kind of went on record as saying that he wanted to juju back as well so I think that's probably a sign that he comes back as far as the rest of the team they lost uh, Pouncey he retired mm -hmm. so it, it's something interesting I think to look out with the Steelers I think they're still going to be a good team any mm -hmm. team that has TJ Watt and Mika Fitzpatrick on that defense Big Ben is uh, I mean one of the best quarterbacks of all time all not time, yeah. top tier but you know what I mean yeah. he's he's played in some big games won some big games you got Juju you got Chase Claypool Chase, yeah. I think this is a team that could make some noise in their division I don't know, I mean, as far as the future goes, but Big Ben, I think right now, I think that's what you're worried about if you're a Steelers fan. I think Big Ben really wants to win. Like, he really wants to win before he goes out. I remember last, the last game that they played in the postseason, him and Mark uh, Pouncey, they shared a little moment at the end of the game before Pouncey was retired and everything. And I honestly didn't think he was going to come back without Pouncey. So, because the offensive line has been a little bit of an issue, and now it's going to be a big issue because that was the best lineman that they had. Um, but I do feel confident that they'll bring, be able to bring Juju back now. 
with yeah. the son of the big man. I saw him make a post on Instagram about it. Like now we could talk, you know, just silly. It's silly, but you know, he, that's today's like the day and age that we're in, right? Yeah, Social like, media tells everything. It indicates a lot. Yeah. He, and Hey, we we've touched on TJ Watt being on this defense. Mm -hmm. I we missed on the opportunity of having JJ, JJ Watt, Watt yeah. on the Steelers with his Man. two brothers. It's that disappointing, yeah. but he goes to Arizona to reunite with DeAndre Hopkins. The Texans kind of getting some some love over there as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good defense. I mean, Arizona will be a team to look out for yeah. as well. He said he he really liked Kyler Murray, any team that has a quarterback like that. I mean, what's your what's your thoughts on Arizona? Is that a team now that you think honestly, is a contender? Honestly, I thought last year Arizona could have been a contender had they kept up the pace that they were playing at. They saw a few injuries last year towards you know the middle of the season. They got the defense in trouble. I think signing J.J. Watt is a big – is a big signing because he played a lot last season compared to the seasons before he's been a little injured you know i think that he's rehabbing he's coming back a healthier player you know and hopefully they can get the best out of him it's the it's the west though it's the nfc west but the thing about that division though that's what that was gonna be my point of why they might be contenders the rams they traded golf for matt stafford they so they're yeah. they're in their mind they reloaded you don't know what's going to happen with russell wilson don't, and the seahawks he, he wants to go to chicago he wants to go. I don't know if he wants to leave necessarily. I, I don't think he does. I just don't see any way Seattle trades him. Mm -hmm. You don't really know what's going to happen. I think the 49ers said they're going to keep Jimmy G. That division could be wide open. I don't, I don't know it could how be. much better Matt Stafford makes the Rams. Obviously, if Russell Wilson leaves the Seahawks, they uh -oh. could be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah. And the 49ers, I mean, they were a team that was in the Super Bowl two years ago, but they didn't have Maybe. a great year last year. Obviously, Kittle got injured for a while. Uh, Nick Bosa was injured, but... That division's open, so that could be the way I think you see them maybe be a contender. Yeah, I think Arizona will at least be – they won't be a third or fourth seed in the NFC West this season. They ought to be one or two. So, we got me on Hawks next record saying that one. So, if everything happens in a few years, you know, run that back, they'll hey. be the top seed. Well, let's keep with our Pittsburgh sports yeah. thing now. We mentioned the Steelers. Mm -hmm. Sidney Crosby, he's on the COVID list right now for the Penguins. And typically, I don't think it would be much news if it was a guy that was maybe 26, 27. That's on the right. COVID list. But Sidney Crosby's 33, four years left on his deal. I mean, he's still playing. He's still one of the best players in yeah. hockey. It's, it's pretty clear there. Do you see him playing past this four years on his deal? Do you think he tries to play longer? I think Crosby is going to play. Um, well, obviously, you know, not counting health, health aside, you know, if he's healthy, I think Crosby's going to play because Crosby hasn't had a season where he hasn't played at a high level. Still, you know, when he's fully healthy, he you get the best, you know, Sidney Crosby possible. He's always been, you know, that type of player, that caliber player. I think that he'll try to push himself to play at least until I think he'll have one more contract after this one expires. It might be a one or two year. Not too sure, but I think that he definitely plays, especially if he can. I think I think one thing is you mentioned that he's always playing at a high level and just over a thousand games played. He has over twelve hundred points, mm. which is remarkable yeah, over a point per game player crazy. for his career, which is very hard to do. And that's hockey. Exactly. That's, yeah, that's hard. This year he has twenty one <laughs> games played. He has seven goals, twelve assists. Not bad at all, especially no. in a year where it came off a twenty twenty year where you start, you stop, you start all right. a month and a half, two months off and you start again. I think Crosby probably plays, like you said, one more contract. Mm. And, and I think that's him playing. Four years at a pretty high level, and I think you maybe start to see that decline that you saw. I mean, there's some. If you look at some old examples, there's. It's hard to look at like a Henrik Zetterberg example. He had mm -hmm. back issues, which kind of caused him to fall off. But I think Crosby will be that guy. Leadership, like you said, and hang around and try to win another cup, which I think any team with Sidney Crosby is capable of. Yeah. It. How long did Wayne Gretzky play? You know, a long time. I think Wayne played for. Wayne yeah. was old. That's. He yeah. was, and he was one of the best to ever do it too. That's and you I'm see saying, that with yeah. some of these greats. I think that was a good point. It's a good theme. They got a different drive. Yeah, so I, it's crazy, man. Yeah. So I think you see Crosby play four more years, obviously, on this contract. I, I always thought he would play till he's 40. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, with seven more years, he has a concussion history, if that's doable. But the way the games change, you don't yeah, see as many of those cool. big hits like you did mm -hmm. back a couple years ago, even just 11, uh, 10 years ago. But. I think you see Crosby play till he's 40. Yeah, great play today, 40. But I think that's going to wrap up the professional sports edition of Hawks Nest. Let yeah. us know in the comments how long you think Crosby plays and give us your March Madness picks. Uh, Leon and I can read them off on the air. We'll give our thoughts on it. Yeah, don't choose Duke. Don't choose Kentucky. That's the only cheat code I could give you for this, you know, this season. You know, don't, don't choose those guys. Be sure to tune in next week. For Leon Miller, I'm Clay Harrell, and we say have a good weekend.